to all of you. Romans chapter 10, verse 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now get this in context. This is not speaking of salvation. He's writing to a church. Telling them that, you know, you've experienced something. And you should call. I, I don't know about you, but I call on the name of the Lord to be saved every day. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation I will anger you. Y'all there? Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that what? That asked not after me. But to Israel saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Just want to preach from this thought a man sent. A man sent. Why don't you put your Bibles down with me, lift your hands, and let's ask the Lord to help us in this place today. Father, you're so good and merciful and powerful. There is none like you. You're my king. You're my answer tonight. And I know by your power, God, that you can do all things in this service today. We bind every spirit of doubt, fear, confusion, every spirit that exalts itself above your knowledge. We take authority over it right now. Could you pray and open your mouth right now? Father, we need you in this place. God, I need you to break the spirit of unbelief. I need you to break the spirit of unbelief in this place today. God, there's going to be a revival in this area. You're raising up churches. You're raising up congregations, God, that are going to seek your face with everything that they've got. A harvest, God, that will not be gathered under one roof. Lord, right now, we come against every spirit of doubt, fear, confusion, every spirit that exalts itself above your knowledge. Be God in this place. Why don't you clap your hands and shout unto the Lord. You may be seated. I absolutely believe that pastoring a church is not just given to people for opportunity. Because if you go because it's an opportunity, you'll be running when it don't look that good. I always say this when people come tell me, I got a burden to do something. Go pray until you get a calling to do it. Because guess what? Burdens turn into burdens.
But callings turn into something there's no retreat from. And if a man is going to be sent, and this word sent there, it just doesn't mean to send forth. I've heard people make that statement, but it's much deeper. It means to order one to go to a place appointed. There's a depth in what God said when a preacher is put somewhere. He's sent. He's appointed there. T.F. Tenney said, God's finger never points where his hand doesn't provide. When God points a direction, you go. Abraham, where are you going? I don't know. I just know the direction. Because when God points you somewhere, he's got something that is for you. Are you there? Has anybody ever had God speak to you something and there wasn't nothing hell could do to steal it from you? No matter how hard it got, Sister McKippen, you knew it was a God dream and you just put your foot down and said, no, this is, this is what I heard in prayer. I know what the environment's telling me, but this is what I heard in prayer. I know what the surroundings are telling me, but this is what I heard in prayer. The only thing, the only thing, the only thing that could stop what God wants to do, in fact, he can't even really stop it, but it could hinder it to a point that God would have to reveal himself to people that didn't seek him and didn't call on him. The only two things that can hinder this is disobedience. Y'all there? Let me, let me talk about obedience here tonight. Obedience is better than for rebellion is a it's a spirit of witchcraft. Obedience has always been God's uh, cost to seeing the supernatural. In fact, the Bible teaches us, and I'm, I'm going to try to get moving here, but without faith, it's impossible to please him, but faith is dead without works, or faith is dead without obedience. Come on, we need to obey. Anybody feel like obeying God? Y'all going to make me have to, okay, I'm going I'm to do some cliches and maybe I'll help you tonight. How about clap your hands, all your people, and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Now, come on, living way. We're stronger than what we're, we're at. Don't settle into the environment right here. We need to rise above what God wants to do in this place and speak a word of faith. This obedience will handle, will, will, it, will, it will challenge what God has sent the man to do and gainsay any speaking that comes against or contradicts what God has set forth will hinder the plan of God. You, you need to be careful what you say. Y'all there? You, you, you need to be careful what you say. You need to make sure that when you speak, you're speaking affirmations of faith and, and believing that God's going to do something incredible. Can I tell you, God does not despise small things. In fact, the Bible said, for who hath despised the day of small things? Who has disrespected something small? And Shane, let me tell Pastor Carter, excuse me, let me say something to you tonight. Beginning empty-handed and alone frightens the best of men. But it also speaks volumes of just how confident that they are that God is with them. It's not easy to start small. Oh, sweet God, y'all going to help me today? I'm going to tell you something. Many will never achieve what God has for them because they want their beginning to be spectacular and no cost to them. But in this walk, if you're going to walk the walk, you're going to...
going to have to believe when it doesn't look like what you have is sufficient and what you need is enough. You're going to have to be willing to say, God, I might be going in empty-handed, but I know the word that you have spoken. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. You know what's killing our churches? It's the spirit of, of, of everything being sensational. And people have learned to move by emotions. And if we sing the right song to collect, to connect with your sorrow or where you are in your life, you will show some kind of emotions. But can I tell you, faith is not connected to emotion. Faith is connected to what God has said. It's connected to a word that cannot be changed. I don't care how, how, how much the storm comes and how much the wind blows and whatever happens in your life, there's not anything hell can do because when God speaks, his word will not return for it, but it will accomplish what it was sent to do. So I tell this church tonight, don't, de don't despise small things. But can I tell you, if you've got a small mentality, you are not measuring up to what God has called you to be. Pastor Hutto, I pray for a revival that would sweep our state, sweep our nation, sweep our world. But if we're going to have a God-sized revival, we've got to think God-sized dreams. We can't be limited, though our circle be small. And you say, well, churches ain't doing that. People aren't doing that. You need to make your mind up if God says it. God. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Brother Hutto, y'all are an example. When you build a fire, people will come. I was preaching revival for somebody in Georgia. I shouldn't even said the state. And everybody was leaving this church. And I'd been in there for, for two, three weeks, however long. I, I didn't schedule anything less than two weeks. But, so I know I'd been there two weeks. And I doubt I was there three because there's no way I would have stayed in that cemetery for three weeks. And I told my wife, I said, I've listened to him gripe and complain about every church. And he was calling out guys around him. And he, he was calling their names. And I, I told you, I said, if he says one more thing, this is the last night. Wait till I get my check. <laughs> Which wasn't enough because when you say you can't afford it, you mean it. Nobody can afford this. You got to want it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay. And he told me, he said, man, he got to talking about this pastor, and I just stopped him and said, let me tell you something. I said, brother, I said, even an animal knows when a creek's dried up to go find some water. I said, if you want them to stay, you need to get some living water flowing through the church. I, I've said that because I'm fishing. I'm fishing. I'm fishing. I'm fishing. I, I, I got a reason for saying. Don't let, let, wait. I, I understand people are gonna leave churches and go to churches. It happens all the time, and it's amazing how people call one preacher a proselyter and look at thirty of his saints sitting on their pews and not think that they proselyted. It's the nature of the beast. Somewhere along the way, Pastor Hutto, we got to get an eternity mindset on us that if they can be saved over there, they need to go over there. I would rather somebody go to another church and be saved than go to hell in the church that I pastor. But the spirit that's in this community and the surrounding communities and where I just came from is that our growth is with people moving in. Our growth is Pentecostals coming in, but there's trying a challenge cha taking place in the church world today that God is wanting to pour his spirit out on all flesh, flesh that has never tasted and seen the goodness 
of the Lord. And can I tell Columbia in this building here tonight, you got to get it in your mind that this is going to be a place where sinners are saved. This is going to be... Y'all don't want to help me right now. This is going to be a place where people are buried in the name of Jesus, where people are filled with the Holy Ghost, where people are set free of drug addiction. This is the place. We can't be cookie cutter churches. We got to be churches that will get the mind of God for the area that we are in. Clap your hands to him right now. Pastor, Pastor Carter, you got to get it in your mind that small is not a word that God uses. He might start, start small, but he don't end small. Some of you say, well, I don't know if I believe that. Well, go read your Bible. When, that Bible, when the Bible talks about the mustard seed of faith, it, it's, it, it's talking about the beginning stages, but it don't stop there. Because in, in Matthew 13, it talks about how that when it grows, that it is one of the biggest and strongest trees and he said that's how you are this is what you're supposed to be it, you're not supposed to always be small but it's supposed to grow up and be a tree that people can come and get rest on but come on come on come on it might start small but it's going to end big come on what about the talents what about the talents can I tell you if all we do is maintain until the rapture takes place we have missed God God's not going to be pleased with us just maintaining God wants to see a revival pour out in this place that's greater than anything we've seen before Somebody say, I want it. No, somebody say, I'm going and getting it. I'm going and getting it. I'm, I, I just, I, I'm making my mind up. I, I can't settle for less. Preachers going to talk about you. People are going to talk about you. You know what? It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. People want to talk about finances. That's cool. Let's talk about finances. I'll talk finances with you. I love talking about it. It's called currency. I make it my life's ambition to give something away every day. Every day. I don't know why. Because I understand the blessing of giving. Oh, God, help us today. I, I, people, people want to talk like you're getting rich and you got nine staff members, you give a couple hundred thousand dollars to missions and you pay for people to go on mission trips and they act like that's a problem. Somebody has lost their mind. Okay, okay, I, I got five of you with me right now. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I have come to be spent of God. And I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. You want to build people? You got to take them where God is moving. They got to see things. They got to believe things. They got to get outside their box. They got to get outside their spirit. They got to say, my God, if God will do it through them, he'll do it through me because the truth of the matter is God didn't just called Nathan Thornton and God didn't just call Pastor Carter he called everybody sitting on the pews of this church to be great and to be soul winners and to see his power and to see his glory Come on, when you come against God's purpose, you're coming against God himself. When God joins himself to something, you better not try to divide it. He said what God has joined together, let no man. What God's done, Brother Carter, is God's linked up to this church. And your best days are before you. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're going to fight devils. Because conflict comes with purpose. 
But if you'll learn to engage in spiritual warfare when Satan attacks, Pastor Carter, you're going to find out that he will unknowingly advance the very purpose he had hoped to hinder. He can't stop this church. Oh, God. You're not here. I love it when he gets stirred up. That means we're moving. <laughs> Come on, I'm telling you, it ain't the devil that I'm worried about. It's the flesh that I'm worried about. We can cast the devil out and run over him, but we can't do nothing with a dead carcass. You got to make your mind up. My kids, God hears my prayer for them. This community is going to break out in old fashioned Holy Ghost revival, not with methods, but with prayer, not with structure, but with praise. We're going to be the liveliest church because because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. He's been good to me. Come here, Eddie. I, I, I need, I'm going to stop. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm unravel. I'm going to unravel something. You just, isn't it amazing? Somebody told me a story about, I think it was you, Eddie. You grabbed some people a couple Sundays ago, and they, they, they weren't going to go to eat. They really didn't have the money to eat. Was that you? And you pulled, You didn't know they didn't have money. You asked them where they were going. And they said, well, I don't, I don't, we're, we're going home. You said, don't have They said, no, we, we're, we're good. And you pulled out a 20 and said, come eat with us. Yeah. <laughs> because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Some, some of us are looking around like we're crazy here right now because you don't really believe what we've preached. That convicted me. That, that absolutely convicted me that Eddie would fall so much in love with God that he would look at people and say, hey, I, I want you to come eat with me. Would you, would, you come, would you come eat with me? Would you come over to the church and eat next time, Eddie? I'm telling you, we'll give it to you for free. With all the takers in the world, when you get connected with God, you won't be a taker. You'll be a giver. You want to know why I give praise? It's because of what God gave me. You want to know why I believe in revival? It's because what God has done in my life. Somebody ought to say, I love it. Come on, let's praise him like he, like he saved us. Let's praise him like he delivered you. Somebody praise him. Paul, Paul, said, Paul said it like this. He said, I therefore so run, not uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beateth against the air. You've been fighting things. You can't even see it. You're, you're wore out because you thought your problem was something it wasn't. You've been fighting some things that wasn't even your problem. You've been fighting, you've been fighting the preacher. You've been fighting somebody you got, you got offended. You've been fighting bitterness. You've been, you've been wondering, I've been in the church all my life and I hadn't seen God do this. Why don't you turn that around and say, oh God, I've been coming faithful all my life, but I know when I come back tomorrow, I, I could see it then. And when I step back in the next day, I could see it then. Why don't you quit being so negative and trying to fight things until you get so exhausted? Paul said, I don't run just some race that I don't know what I'm doing. I've got structure. I've got some certainty with where I'm running. I don't fight like I'm beating against the air. I know who I am fighting. He said, I'm strategic in my warfare. He said, I've calculated and I've deliberated with it. I know who my enemy is. It's not flesh and blood. It's the devil trying to keep me out of my purpose. It's not my bishop. It's not my pastor. It's not the church. It's not who's sitting next to me. It's that devil who's trying to separate me. But I'm not going to fight something that is not my enemy.
prophet Hosea, and I'm hurrying. Prophet Hosea said, people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Somebody said, it's up here. I know y'all never had TVs. I didn't either. I had TV dinners. But G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. What, what's, anybody know that? What, what's, what's their slogan? Come on, children's pastor. Just know it. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowing. Knowing. You know what offense brings? It opens the door to false doctrine. Somebody gets, off oh, get, gets off offended. Offended. Oh, I can't believe that preacher said that. You know what we think? I can't believe they're saying that. You want to solve your prop, your your pastor from saying stupid stuff? Go nuts! Because two things that either happen: we'll shut up faster, or if we say something stupid, you'll be so busy praising you won't hear it. Okay. Somebody said that ain't good sound doctrine. Okay. That, that offense, it opens, it breathes, it breathes you to believe a lie. Paul, Paul wrote, said, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not, what? Ignorant of his devices. Our ignorance has always been Satan's advantage. You want to give Satan an advantage? You act ignorant. Literally. You, you, don't, you don't identify. Isn't it amazing we can identify everything? But we cannot identify when the enemy has come in. Do you not realize even the angel of darkness can be an angel of light? Come in and, man, they're, they're spiritual people. They're spiritual, yeah, they're spiritual people. They're rebellious and they're gang saviors. And they've come against everything God's trying to do. But they're not operating in the spirit you think they're operating in. They're operating in something that's going to get an advantage over you. If you don't learn how to get it out of your mind and out of your spirit, Come on, somebody. I'm telling you. You listen to me. You listen to me. You listen to me, you good old-fashioned apostolic people sitting in this church tonight. You listen to this preacher right now. Get your head out of the Republican Party. Get your head out of the Democratic Party and understand that this thing is winding down to an end and churches that play politics forfeit their right for revival. We're not some limp-wristed, uh, uh, powerless church that it's getting pushed around by some devil. We're the church of the living God that in the last days he's going to pour his spirit out on all flesh. We're going to see the latter rain and the former rain together in the first month. It's going to be the greatest. I'm telling you, wheelchairs are coming empty. The blind is going to see. The lame is going to walk. And greater than all of that, people that have never received the Holy Ghost are going to receive it and talk in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. I'm telling you, God is going to do it. Somebody say he's going to do it. Do it. He's going to do it. Look at your neighbor and say he's going to do it. Look at your neighbor and say he's going to do it right here at these altars. Come on, Pastor Hutto, he's going to do it in that new building. Listen to me. I hope you're building debt free, but if you're not, when you fill it up, just go to two services when you, when, until you get it paid off and then you can build again because he's going to do it right here in 
this community. And the more the enemy fights, he's going to promote. The more people try to stop it, God's going to keep doing it. The Bible said the more they killed the Hebrew sons, the more they multiplied. Come on, I'm telling you, you listen to this preacher, there's not an opposition that's got more power than his church. There's not anything in this world that's got more power than his glory. Hurry, and I'll, I'll say this about everywhere I go. Let me get one of these big chairs. The Bible teaches us that Jesus will make our enemies footstools. What's a footstool? Now, this is so deep, I don't know if you can get it. A footstool is a piece of furniture. Now, I looked this up. Give me, give me credits for it. This is powerful. A footstool is a piece of furniture, a support used to elevate. And God said, the enemy will elevate you. I've learned it all my life, all my ministry. You don't fight people. <laughs> you let the enemy elevate you because the plan they have God will put it in reverse and he will further what you have planned what he has planned in your life because every enemy is a footstool to get us closer to God and to get us closer to fulfilling our purpose so I'm telling you this debt might be an enemy but one day it's going to elevate us you want to know why brother sister McKinley because we've got a building a nice building that's going to occupy apostolic revival. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, we're not crippled by what's going on. We'll be made by what's going on because the enemy's our footstool. The enemy is our footstool. I'm, I'm trying to hurry. But you got, you got to get out of this complacency. I've been preaching a long time. You, you, you got to get out of this complacency. Apathy does not breathe revival. I'll tell you what apathy do. Apathy, apathy will make you miss what God's trying to do. God has never called us to be defensive. You know, I can tell when I ain't prayed. By one, by, well, a few things, but one of the major things I can tell when I ain't prayed when I get defensive. When people make a statement and I got to defend it, I know I ain't prayed. Because God's never called us to be on the defensive. He's always been called us to be on the offensive. Okay. I know, I know, I know. Offense, what do you mean? Offense scores the points. Hold on. Do y'all realize when they started cel uh, celebrating in sports, it started on the offensive side first. The offense knows how to dance. Y'all going to make the inner Matt Tuttle come out of me right now. The offense, they score the points. They bear the flash. They, 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 they don't need, they, 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 it's the defense that protects. And, and God has always said, let me tell you about this church. This church, he said, thou art Peter, and upon this, this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is he saying? Gates don't move, but when we make our minds that we're going to possess the gates, that we have the power to break through hell's strongest holds. Can I tell you there's not a spirit in this community that is greater than the God that has set us free. And if God's delivered you, God's going to deliver somebody else. Come on, somebody say, I'm going and getting it. I'm going and getting it. I'm going to get it. What John the Baptist say? Come on, he said the kingdom of heaven, what? And the, you got to take it. 
at your neighbor and say, take it. Who's got a $100 bill in here? Who's got a $100 bill? Nobody's got a $100 bill. No, I'm kidding, Tommy. I'm kidding because if I do it, I'm going to tell whoever wants to come get it, come get it. That's right. That's right. That's right. I want you to keep your $100. But if I said I had $100, the, the only people that wouldn't move was those that thought you were too cool to move. But those that wanted it, they'd push, they'd scratch, they'd kick. Because they understood that if you wanted it, you had to go take it. And I'm telling you, you, you listen to me. I'm sick of folks talking about how it used to be that sits deader and then a hammer that falls asleep on Sunday morning and if you preach too long, they're worried about what they're missing. They're worried about their roast. They're worried about it. I am so sick of people talking about how it used to be. Honey, why don't you show us? Because my grandmother didn't sit there. When she was dead. Oh, I know how they used to shout. Some of you have lost your mind. You forgot how you used to pray. Don't talk to me how it used to be. Show me, show me, show me. Just hit a key where I act like I'm crazy. Just one key. I've got to do it louder than that. Okay. It only takes me 30 minutes to close. Come here, come here, come here, Eric. I mean, Ken. Come here, Ken. My grandmother, I was backslid. I was backslid. I was backslid, sitting on the second row. Backslid. Made my mind up. I was going to go to church. I was going to teach Bible studies. I was doing nursing home. And God forbid, I was teaching an eight, nine-year-old Sunday school class. Oh, God. I was backslid. My grandmother knew I was backslid. I was sitting there because I was scared to death what God called me to be, and I wanted to be what I thought I could be. I'll never forget, man, it got to moving, folks. And she walked down there, and you, you know when your grandmother comes, and, and you're sitting about third or fourth in that second row, you're acting like you don't see her. My buddy hit me like this. He hit me. He went, I still remember this. He went, he finally went, Nathan. I said, what, bud? I looked. He said, your grandma wants you. And I knew it. I, you go, you, you don't, you're not nearly as cool as my grandmother. You go. <laughs> <clears throat> I come out, she grabbed my hand, and for I knew. You know, and she's slow, thank God, so I could just do this. <laughs> and she got to, <clears throat> she got to, <clears throat> whoo, whoo, and I fought it for every bit of ten steps, but man, it started coming down my neck. And before I knew it, I was doing the Daffy Duck just like she was. Come on. You know what she would tell me about doing? Woo! She said, Nathan, I'm just letting hell know you're trying to kill me, but I'm still alive, and that's a war hop. This means war. And I knew right then she was warring for my soul. I'm so sick of having cute, pretty, oh, nice church. Why don't some old mama get some Holy Ghost back in them and say we're going to the gates again. We're stepping into hell again, and we're pulling them out of fire. Come on, lift your hands with me. Come on, musicians. Come on, lift your hands with me today. Come on, let's praise it.
Pastor Shane, I want y'all to come stand right here. You and you and Sister Carter, I want you to come stand right here. Here's what you know. You know God sent you here. You won't remember this, but before you ever went to Indiana, you will remember this because it was in your spirit. Forgive me for saying that. Speak doubt. Before you ever went to Indiana to help, you told me you were called to Columbia. You knew it. You've known it for years. Y'all both have known it for years. God sent you here. It's not going to be easy. Teaching Sunday school ain't easy. Being faithful is sometimes not easy. When you step behind this pulpit, you're not stepping because you've been commissioned from a church that's 25, 30 minutes away. You're stepping behind a pulpit, and Sister Carter, you're singing and, and, and helping lead these people with God behind you because he didn't just, somebody just didn't draw straws and y'all win. You've been sent. You've been appointed. This is the time. This is the place. And let me ask this great church something before I finish this offering altar. What kind of church do you want to be? You want to be the church where the supernatural is natural in the church? You want to be a church that leans on prayer, leans on God, that leans on being obedient to the Word of God that takes you to another level of sacrifice. What kind of church, what kind of revival do you want in Columbia? It didn't even feel strange parking in this parking lot with all these cars. You know why? Because when I came here, I see this church, I don't look at some backwoods church that Brother McKithen said, you know what, I don't have nothing better to do, but let's go build a church out there. This is a destiny house. A place appointed and anointed by God. Would this great church, if you're a member of this church, if you're, you belong to this church, I mean, I know you belong to God, but if this is your home church, would you come and, and, and let's gather around Pastor Shane and Sister Selena. We're just to pray for them in just a few moments, but I want you to come. I want you all to gather around. Look at this, man. Hey, y'all, y'all just turn around and look at all these people coming. You're not, you're not ordinary people. Some of you have been broken. Some of you feel like life's knocked the air out of you. Well, guess what? Join the party, my friend. You're not some ordinary. And I, I want to bring you up here where I can show them I skipped three pages. And didn't even have that nice story I was going to tell at the end, you know. You're not some ordinary church. You're not just some group of people that gather together under the umbrella of the name of Jesus. And nothing's going to happen. This is a God-destined place. Destined to see revival. You know what I pray, Pastor Carter I, and Sister Carter? I pray every church that preaches truth in this area would link up. And we'd see the greatest revival of outpouring of God.
Don't fight. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me, you beautiful people that are down here tonight. Don't fight God doing big things because it's going to take big things to save your family. Don't fight progress. Don't fight when the man of God gets up and preach. And be careful what you fight about. Don't fight your your pastor when he's just loving people and trying to get the best out of them. Don't fight your pastor when he gets up in here and he declares a word and he starts he starts giving uh, he starts talking about what God's going to do in people's lives that you know and you say, my God, but God don't want to do that. And don't fight it. Because one day you're going to be on that side. You know what it takes for dead people to live? It takes a prophetic word. There's enough killing going around in the church. There's enough killing going around in the church. There's not enough prophesying. What I see here... We've talked it at our church, and man, I have fought it this week. I hadn't been home before 11 o'clock this week. Not even last night, even though that was a carnal thing I was doing last night. Not sin. It was carnal. But, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And the reason is because people fight big dreams, and they want to come in. They want to measure it with a measuring stick. But if you can measure it, it's not God. I'm going to tell you something. I refuse to leave with fear, anxiety, and confusion. I refuse to be bound by fear, anxiety, and confusion. Fear, anxiety, and confusion. I refuse to allow the spirit of the world to manipulate my mind, manipulate my heart, and manipulate my actions. And this church is an offspring of of a vision that God has given us not just for our communities, Pastor Carl, but for the world. We're sending out our first Amers April 2nd. Our church is completely supporting them. That's been a dream. I remember preaching that we would give 20% of our church to foreign missions and home missions. And I remember my wife looking and saying, Nathan, look what we gave Look what we have given through our church and look at the end number of what we have made. And it wasn't just 20% of what come through the church. It counted our daycare. Some say that's foolish. No. When did investing in the gospel become foolish? Okay. Man, we're fine. confront it head on because vision always outlasts the critics and you preach it you preach it as big if you can think it you need to preach it I know I get up on Sundays and I'll say things and I know our staff is thinking oh God how are we going to do that I, and I don't know they come in and say hey we, you said this how are we going to do it I don't like I don't know figure it out Because here's what I know is when we get into the presence and the Spirit of God, we need to tap into what we understand that this church, there, there'll be a, a restoration center here. It won't just be one in West Monroe. There'll be one right here. Pastor Carter, you'll start Daughter Works one day. You'll send out aimers one day. It's going to happen. Because it's God's will. Here's what I want. You precious people of God, I want you to challenge yourself. When we walk in here Sunday, we're going to walk in and we're going to give God our best. God, God, listen, listen. God don't ask. God, God's not going to ask for anything that you can't give, but he will ask for all that you can give. And if you'll give it, God on anointed. We got any oil in this house? I know we do. To my left. Take a 
McKithen, I'd love for you to pray with us tonight. Sister McKithen, I would love for you to pray with us tonight. Uh, Michelle, if you'd come, our ministers and their wives, would you just gather around these great people of God here as we lay hands on, on Pastor, Pastor and Sister Carter. We're going to believe God right now. Why don't you stand with me if you will? Why don't you stand and just lift your hands and, and uh, lift up your voice. We're going to pray for Brother Carter right now in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, by the power of your holy word, he's a man of God. I pray right now by the power of your holy name that you would anoint him and you would touch him today, God. God, that you would open his heart and his mind and his soul, God. God, to hear from you, God, and direct this congregation, not in the fear of men, but in the power of God. God, give him direction and clarity for vision. God, let prayer, let prayer, let there be an outbreak of prayer in this church right now. God, let praise break forth in this place. Let the anointing of the Lord break forth in this house today. God, we bind every spirit that would come against him physically. We bind every spirit that would come against him mentally. We bind every spirit, God, that would try to attack his faith and his spirit. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, open his eyes. Let him see as you see. Let him hear what you're saying, God. Anoint him like he's never been anointed before. Let him preach with fire and passion like he's never preached before. Give him a word, God, to speak. Give him a word to speak right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we pray for Sister Carter right now. In the name of Jesus, by the power of your holy word, God, we pray that you would give her strength. God, that you would give her clarity. We come against any spirit that would make her feel overwhelmed. God, let her be a gift and a confidence to her husband. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, let them be one flesh. Let them see what you have spoken. Let them see it together. Let them speak the same thing. Let them reach for the same thing. God, touch her physically. Touch her mentally. Touch her spiritually. God, right now, by the power of your holy word, right now. Come on, could you lift your hands? Why don't some of you good, good living way people step out and pray for some of these people of God that's standing around them right now? Come on, could we let travail come forth right now? Come on, living way, why don't you gather around these altars? Why don't you pray with some of these great people of God tonight? Come on, hala ba hashela ba kata. Hila ba shaya la ba kaya la bohosoto ya la ba hai. God, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Come on, come on, speak, speak life, speak life. Hila ba hashela ba Come on, why don't we pray? Why don't we pray right now in the Holy Ghost? 